Meeting call to order. We are on to item A, Springwood Avenue Harmony, the unique yeah. musical legacy of the Asbury Park's west side. Thanks, you guys. Everybody, let's go on down. Thank you. Do we have the oh. hand mic? Do we need the hand mic? You want the hand mic? Do we need it? Do we have the hand mic? Hand mic? Me? Uh, hand it. mic? No. Testing. <laughs> well, number one, uh, we apologize for running late tonight, but uh, as we all know we've had a couple of uh, mishaps on Main Street with the uh, utilities coming out of so we were on the phone with the DOT about that. So again, we apologize. But what we're starting off with tonight is uh, the Horners, Pam and Charlie, who are so good to have you park in like probably the world's experts in the mm -hmm. Hall of Fame as far as records and everything. Instead of me telling and not doing you do justice, please give us a couple of minutes of like all the great things you do. Well, we are uh, basically music historians, and we specialize primarily in black music, African American music, uh, all over. Um, I'm one of the board of directors for the East Coast Music Hall of Fame. Uh, we've been involved in music, I guess, all of our lives. Pam and I are also on the board of directors for the Asbury Park Museum. We're uh, active members of the Asbury uh, Park Historical Society. And uh, we started working on Asbury Park's West Side Music, the history of the West Side Music, I guess uh, nine years ago. And we went through uh, four or five major exhibits of the music, and we started doing research, writing articles, and things like that. And uh, that's how this whole book came about. Let me just say uh, just a few words. Um, Mr. Mayor and, and members of the City Council. Um, over the past 149 years, the west side of Adelaide. I'm going to turn around so everybody can sure. see you on okay. TV. Sure. No, so they come, the camera's there so they can see you on TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, over the past 149 years, the west side of Adelaide Park has contributed greatly to many diverse fields of American popular music. Um, if you look at, at things like uh, gospel music, blues, rhythm and blues, jazz, things like this, uh, you can go to any encyclopedia of music, uh, popular music, or history books on popular music. There is no mention of Asbury Park involving black music. And uh, if you just look at, at something like jazz, there are now books out, plenty of books out on New Orleans jazz from Storyville, uh, Chicago, Southside, uh, Harlem, uh, and no mention of Springwood Avenue. In spite of the fact that Springwood Avenue has contributed greatly to the careers of a number of, of, of huge jazz artists like Duke Ellington, Cal Basie, Earl Garner, uh, Claude Hopkins, and things like that. So. Um, we want to do, try to rectify this. So about nine years ago, we started heavily working on this book. Um, we now have out the uh, first definitive book on West Side Music, volume one, and it goes from 1871 up to 1945. The second volume will be out later in this year. But uh, it's called Springwood Avenue Harmony, the unique musical legacy of Asbury Park's West Side from 1871 to 1945. And we wanted the city of Asbury Park to have the first copy of, of the book. So please accept it. And they do volunteer so much uh, with the Historical Society, uh, with everything, the concerts, and everything. Just again, he cut his background down just because we're running late, but his background is much better than what he said. <laughs> and it, this is truly, and he did want to grab it for the city. Yes, that's fantastic. The first one. This is deeply appreciated. We'll find a good home for it, someplace where everybody can look at it and read it and not take it with <laughs> Thank you. March, uh, March 12th, we have a book launch party at the Asbury Park Library, Public Library. It starts at 7 o'clock, and it's a Thursday evening. And then we have another book signing that's going to be at St. Augustine's Church on, uh, on um, I the 20, I don't know, I'll put well, a date. Uh, 
we also do a 45 minute presentation, a multi minute presentation before the book signing. Before the book signing. So it's, it's entertaining. We tell stories, some of the better anecdotal stories from the book that we go over, and we show slides and play music clips and things. So I hope you can join us uh, at the library. We have some flyers there if we, anybody wants them. Do you have them now? Yes, we do. We'll put them over here so people yeah. can pick them up. Yeah. Right. All right, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Let's get a picture of them. Maybe they can get center. Yeah. Okay. You guys. Go ahead. Oh, it's not on the one. Right over here. Thank you. On to item C, city manager's report on issues. Item B, city manager's report on issues raised at prior council meeting. Nothing. Okay. okay, we're on to item C, items to be presented by Deal Lake Commission. How are you all doing tonight, Mayor, Council? Good, and Don, if you want to bring everybody up and pull more chairs, how, whatever's the most Either way. You know, easiest. That portable mic I like. Okay, Thank we you have sir. that somewhere. But easiest way for you. Yeah, portable mic screen. I can like walking around and moving. And a clicker. Just a clicker. Oh, I'll put the mic you. back. Here it comes. Thanks. Thanks for the oops. Thanks for the invite. And uh, I just wanted we wanted to go through a couple of things with you. Uh, you know, we had the big grant request we put in years ago in 2017. And out of 88 groups, uh, 13, well, 11 actually locations won it, and we were lucky enough to win the grant. Now, a little story about that grant was uh, that we had lost two previous grant requests for 319 Clean Water Grants. So we're scratching our head. We asked uh, Senator Becht to help us out. We went to DP, had a meeting with them, and they said, team up with two other coastal lakes, and uh, we'll, we'll look at it again. And, and sure enough, easy, easy, right? Easy with Sunset Lake and uh, West Lake. So, you know, commission members of our commission. Our commission is represented by seven towns. Deal Lake Commission. Uh, Jeannie Toller, raise your hand, Jeannie. And, and is, is your representative? And is Bill Hodges is, is a deputy. So he's been he's been very active with, with the commission. Um, but we have representatives all the team. We have also a staff. We have part. Everybody's part time. We're non paid commissioners. That are volunteers picked by the various mayors in the towns. Um, the part of the commissioner and the clerk, the environmental consultant, uh, Steve Joseph, and, and we also have Princeton Hydro involved, um, engineers Peter Voggins' team, and the attorney Hunt Barry and the webmaster's team. Um, you can get the information right on our website or Facebook or Twitter. Uh, Twitter is used basically for opening and closing of, of the gates. So if you're really interested in what's happening with the addition of the lake, just go to Twitter and it'll be right there. Uh, no, you have to on the computer. Oh, I'll hit it. The lake is 4,400 acres. Basically, if you're going from Bangs Avenue to Deal Road in Ocean, right, all the way up past the that's really the, the watershed we're talking about. Maybe a little beyond it. But that's the, that's the where it rains, the water's coming down and coming to Deal Lake. And believe it or not, it actually starts right over here past Town Hall by the post office, and it runs down the water drive. Right. And that's one of our focal points. That's one of our focal points for this project. Also, we're looking at Sunset and also Lake Devil down here. Next one. The grants we've been getting. We got a grant from a family in Mock Harbor to do some landscaping. We have the Flume Restoration Grant, which I'll show you pictures in a minute, $550,000 from the Corps of Engineers. New Jersey DEP Grant 319, that's $735,000 the Bocking team and Princeton Hydro team is going to be talking about that in a minute. Um, and we just submitted another grant for $300,000 for additional 319 grant money. Um, and, and there was two other grants, one from the Deal Lake Watershed Association, which is the nonprofit 
uh, citizens group that's helping out the lake now, which is wonderful. They submitted a small grant for Grand Gardens, and there was another grant request, but NJIT, and it was a, a Chinese boat uh, contraption to eat blue-green algae, so we are involved with that, so we'll see how many grants we get out of it. Thank you. The floor restoration. Uh, we've been down by a lot of activity down by the beach, beach run, right? Um, a lot of things going on. The parking lot in Asbury, we've got Steel Lake Drive getting renovated. It's beautiful down there. It's going to be great. And oh, go back, please. There we go. And if you remember the old, the old building, it was kind of falling apart. Uh, restored that. We ripped up the concrete. Uh, all electronics are in this gate. All these, there's two gates, the North Gate and the South Gate. They're going to be electri they're electrified now with a drill, right? That's how you do it. Or by hand cranking. And John's pretty familiar with that. Uh, but now it's going to be, a motor's going to be placed in here, and it's going to be automated. We can do remote access and open the gates remotely. Because sometimes, if you're doing this at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning in a, in a storm, it's, it's hard. It's, uh, so it's going to be a lot easier to do. Next. This is just some of the construction. One thing we found, which was quite interesting, there were six fiber optic pipes going underneath um, the, the sidewalk, uh, right in front of the floor of the wind. And they dove down, the Lock Armand dove down in Asper, so our communication is somewhere under there, so I'm going, going along this, this path right here. Uh, this is our new pipe for the, uh, the electric system for the flume. Uh, it used to be just a couple wires in the ground, now we've got it protected from the elements and, uh, and humans from cutting, right? Next. This is the, this is the major addition that we had. This is our, our, you remember the old section out here between Lock Harbor and Esbury? They had these old pipes, uh, two inch pipes, galvanized pipes. They were rusting. They were very dangerous for kids and dogs. And, it was just, it was, it was time to go. So we, we negotiated an additional piece to this project was, was to raise this section up. We rose, raised it up a foot and we were able to put it a, a new gate in. Uh, next. And this is our gate. It's a 7,500 pound gate. It's a guillotine gate. It's similar to the ones that we have to um, And it's in, in the up position 95% of the time. But we will now have positive control of the ocean. So if we, if we have a large sewer coming down, we could shut this gate and prevent the ocean from coming in. So we open it up, let the <clears throat> lake flow out in high tides, we can prevent them coming in. So during a real big storm, we raise the lake really rises about six inches, eight inches for a big storm. So that will eliminate, eliminate that and hopefully catch up. So there's two, that 2005 storm, we had a lot of damage to the, uh, the ag on our lake. I, 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 I guess with Sandy, and it was the other one. Um, Irene. Irene, Irene was there. So they were the most recent. That they'll be, they'll be, they'll be pretty much stopped from, from that type of We still have the problem with rain, right? If you get sixes in the rain, it's pretty much predicted we're going to have a problem. You can't get the water out of the, the basin that much, but we can at least plan ahead of time. Our next big shot is, is looking at CDM Wall. If you remember the old Acme building, we're trying to we're trying to put some kind of device in here um, to to stop slow down the water flow into the Deal Lake section, uh, the Point of Terra section. By doing that, we're going to eliminate a lot of the sediment wash now in heaven. Mm -hmm. it's, it's probably the biggest project we're looking at. And I think it's going to be, we're going to have something done probably within the next five years. We'll have something done. So we've got a lot in the county, we have the state helping us, and a lot of local groups. There's a deal like worship of why. It's very, very much in this. Next. Okay. Just some responsibilities that Lake has lake lowering cleanups. We have two cleanups a year. Uh, we have guides, we, have, we give guides to the towns, fish and wildlife. We, we've been pushing stock into the lake. We get pickerel, we get, uh, I should say, pike, northern pike, we get large mouth bass this year, which has, I think, 7,000 fish, and various other species of fish. And been a good, 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 uh, good activity there for the state. Uh, blue green algae, um, all the habit incidents we've had in the last three years. We've been helping out Tino to make it back on, mm -hmm. and Greenwood Lake, you should see some good news coming on that soon. Uh, some changes the state's going to have. Uh, new 319, you just saw that, we, we applied for those grants for the, for the 319s. Sewer line checks, we're going to be doing that with Clean Ocean Action very soon. Right there with the ship and sniff program where we, we take samples and ship them out to Maine, and there's dogs there to sample them. We found some hits, and we're going to investigate most of the Ocean Township area. Uh, and we'll work with the Watershed Association Rotary. We're teaming up on Harbor <coughs> Brook, do some work there, because that's the other one. Little Brook Shopping Center and all of those all of those apartments up in the ocean are in the problem we want to try to address. And again, I want to thank you guys. <laughs> last day there. I just walk in the lake today. I've got this on the side. And it, it's going to make a huge difference. When we do cleanups, on the inner lake inside where the wind was blowing, at one time I took a 30 foot section that was just covered with bags. So it will make a huge difference. So I thank you for that. 
um, next presentation. Here we go. Okay. There. That's the Here we go. Okay, this is the, the application. This is the award we got in 2018, and this is for $735,000. It was a, a very detailed presentation. Um, basically, the green infrastructure was the main emphasis. So we, we added green infrastructure, we're going to add green infrastructure to the West of the Lake area, Sunset Lake, and also in the Deal Lake. Less in Deal Lake, though. Deal Lake's going to have more of a, a concrete structure and a cleaning device, and that's a manufacturing treatment device. Uh, next slide, please. And as you can see, these are the lakes we're talking about. And now I'm going to, uh, and you see the general outfall, out, the outline of Lake Deal Lake. Uh, we, we're concentrating over here by the, the, the flat, the, the shops. And on Sunset Lake, we're more by Grand Avenue and also on, on the west side. And on Wesley, we're, we're, we're planning, a, we were planning a few things. And it wasn't really working out well for us because of the depth. The water was, uh, water table was very high. So meeting with the, the mayor and this new city manager, we had a very nice session, and they gave us the engineering team gave us a great tip, and I'll let the team talk about that. So, Jackson Hansky, come on up. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Council. Uh, so, if we can go to the next slide, uh, I'm going to just kind of run through. Generally, I'm, I'm from Princeton Hydro. We're a uh, environmental engineering and uh, consulting firm, and. Uh, we're in charge of oversight of the green infrastructure. So we're looking at anything that's nature based uh, and uses plant material to take up the nutrients, the pollution, if you will. Uh, the first thing that we have planned uh, is a series of floating wetland islands. And these are actually islands that are floating, exactly how it sounds. Uh, they're made of a polymer and they have uh, holes in them for plant material. So we're going to plant plants in them. Float them out, them float them out into the lakes, uh, and not only will the plants take up the nutrients, but so will microbes. So little little microorganisms that grow within the root system, within the matrix of this island, uh, that will also help to clean up the water. Essentially, is what boils down to. Uh, dep depending on the proximity to the shore as well, it will also have an effect on uh, stabilization of the shoreline. Uh, right now we have a series of six plus one planned for sunset. Um, Jeannie, if you could go to the next slide. Oh, I forgot to mention, they are relatively self-sustaining. So once we put them in, they should grow, the plants get established, and they only just get better as they go and shouldn't need a whole lot of maintenance. This is an example of a floating wetland island that we put out in uh, Hideout in Pennsylvania's coconut community, and over the course of a few years, we see a couple of turtles lake in it, the plants grew and grew, and it, you can't even really tell that it's uh, a man-made structure after a couple of years. Um, go further, we have, so this is a map of the west end of Sunset Lake. These purple squares are where the floating mountain lands are planned for. We based it on the depth, um, and it was presented uh, in October mm -hmm. to the Sunset Lake Commission. Uh, There's some discussion. That went down, and we, you know, we backed up all of our um, decisions, and so this is what should be planned for the springtime, <coughs> early summer. Uh, that'll be happening at some point, and we will provide more information as that becomes a little bit more concrete. Uh, if we have a little bit of extra funding, we'll try to put uh, floating wetland on somewhere on this end of Wesley Lake. In addition to that, we we're looking to put in. Um, some bioinfiltration basins. Essentially what that means is uh, rain gardens. Now, there is an existing rain garden here. We have been told that we should start looking into maybe trying to improve what's already there uh, based on some plans that are in place for um, some new development there. So we're looking into that, but I can't really go into too much more detail until we do a little bit more investigating. But so that's a possibility as well. Uh, our grant covers tree boxes, uh, and essentially they do the same thing. They use plants to take up the nutrients in stormwater as it comes off of, say, like a parking lot. Uh, it gets filtered in, helps the tree grow, the extra water comes off, and it alleviates the flooding. And there's all kinds of benefits to it, it creates habitat. Um, uh, the, we're still working out the um, 
the locations of those as well. As Don said, the water table is a certain height and it isn't allowing for some of the tree boxes and locations we had initially <coughs> proposed, so we're working that out still. So around, around the train station is probably their best bet for them. It all goes in the same lake, so whether it's next to the lake or at, away from the lake, it doesn't matter, as long as it's treating the water. And I think that's what the state would like, and I think they're going to be happy with that plan. And so that's the majority of what we're going to be doing with the green infrastructure. Now, there's some gray infrastructure going in, and I'm going to pass it off to Peter and Turner. I'll start. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Mayor, Council, good to see you and the public members. Um, I've been the engineer for the DLA Commission for a number of years, and in 2004, when the state implemented the stormwater management rules, we started looking at it a little differently, and we've been utilizing, along with the green infrastructure, uh, manufactured treatment devices to clean the water before it's discharged into the lake. Uh, typically, if a stormwater goes through a storm drainage system, and you can take any one of your roadways, the two biggest pipes in Asbury are probably in Memorial Drive, you have a 48 inch and a 36 inch pipe, the 48 inch drains about 160 acres of watershed from Deal Lake south on Memorial Drive. And it goes past, it goes uh, at least up to the post office or a little beyond the post office. Uh, the other pipe, the smaller pipe, which is 36 inches, drains Sunset Lake. And Sunset Lake literally does connect into Deal Lake from a pipe that runs up 6th Avenue and then takes a right on Memorial Drive. And both of them discharge just beyond the Little League Field in the school board property on the west side of the railroad tracks. Uh, no control. Any flowables, any debris, any sediment that goes into Memorial Drive or any of the cross streets gets into the storm water and flows into the drainage inlets and flows into the storm drains and goes into the lake. That's what caused over these years so many dredging projects. And I don't mind doing a dredging project, but I would more than likely rather have a structure in place that can remove that, that sediment from the stormwater and prevent it from going into these lakes. Uh, a few years ago, I was here before the council, and the Deal Lake Commission presented a project on Comstock, and we installed one of these devices just off the baseball field at the high school. It's been working fabulously. We're, we work in conjunction with your Department of Public Maintenance. They provide great service and management of this structure. The intent of the structure, and I understand you're going to see a video if you want to, but the intent of it is to have the stormwater bypass the storm drain pipe, go into this structure offline. So it comes down the pipe, we create a little weir structure, it goes into this. <coughs> the first box is called the swirl chamber. The water goes in, centrifugally <coughs> drops sediment out of suspension, uh, continues on into a chamber where the floatables are collected, continues on into another chamber where the uh, petrochemicals are collected and then discharges back into the storm drain. So through maintenance, periodically, maybe every six months or prior to a major storm event, if this is cleaned out, clean water then goes into the field lake rather than water burdens or pollutants. Uh, when we tested the uh, Comstock structure, the state was amazed at the, the increase and in improvement in water quality as that water went through these structures. One is proposed on Memorial Drive for the big 48-inch pipe. And then I'll introduce Turner Shell from our office. He used to uh, work as the chief environmental planner for Mama County. And Turner uh, went to Sunset Lake, and rather than putting a series of tree boxes that are really difficult to maintain, thought uh, kind of outside the box and said, why don't we put two of these structures on uh, Grand Avenue, I believe it's the northeast corner and the southwest corner of Grand and Sunset Lake. So the larger storm drain pipes that drain about 60 acres of watershed area will go through these structures before they go into Sunset Lake. The water will be cleaner, and then the discharge into Deal Lake will also be cleaner. So Turner will describe a little bit about the location, we'll, we'll do the and uh, then we'll- We'll hit the video, we'll hit the video. Thanks, Turner. Thank you, the Contech Engineered Solutions Vortex Hydrodynamic Separator is a below ground stormwater treatment device that combines squirrel concentration and flow controls into a shallow treatment unit that traps and retains trash, 
debris, sediment, and hydrocarbons from stormwater runoff. It is the ideal solution for projects that require a shallow treatment device due to groundwater, utility, or bedrock constraints. The treatment process begins as stormwater enters the circular aluminum swirl chamber through the inlet. The swirling motion of the water within the chamber promotes gravitational separation <coughs> of solids, which settle and accumulate on the chamber floor, where ample space is provided for sediment storage. Water exits the swirl chamber where a baffle wall traps floatables and hydrocarbons. Water flows under this wall into the flow control chamber. Treated stormwater then flows to the outlet chamber and exits via the outlet pipe. The Vortex system contains separate flow controls for peak and low intensity storm events. The flow controls are designed specific to each project in order to reduce the inflow velocity and increase residence time. During high intensity storms, these controls <coughs> maintain the swirling action within the swirl chamber and prevent re-entrainment of pollutants. Unobstructed access is provided to stored pollutants, making it easy to inspect and maintain. Maintenance is accomplished using a vacuum truck with no requirements to enter the unit. Vortex is available in offline, inline, and cast-in-place configurations and is commonly used for inlets and outlet protection and is pretreatment for filtration, detention, and infiltration, bioretention, rainwater harvesting, and low-impact development designs. With thousands of units installed worldwide, lab and third-party field tests and approvals from leading regulating agencies, including the... So the important thing to note here is that the stormwater goes into this giant concrete box, it swirls around, and when the water comes out, it's a lot cleaner than before it went in. And also, the important thing is another thing is that these are approved by the DEP, uh, and that's, that's the reason that we were able to put these in. It's not exactly green infrastructure, it's not like some of the things that Jack's doing with the floating wetlands island, but it does help with the water quality uh, significantly. And uh, as Peter mentioned, the one over on Comstock Drive has done a, a fantastic job over there. So the uh, actual locations, um, first of all, the largest one, the four foot line would be on Memorial Drive, and it would be between at the uh, middle of the block between Fifth Avenue and Sunset Avenue. And I think you can see it right about um, exactly what else. <laughs> yeah, it's the left, it's right the star on the left side. Yeah, that star yeah. right there. And then there's two other ones, the two smaller ones over here in Sunset. That's the uh, yellow stars that you see either side of Grand Avenue, um, right here and right here. So they're smaller units. Uh, the ones on Sunset, uh, each one, one drinks about a 22-acre watershed, the other one's a 44-acre watershed. And then that larger one that's over on Sunset is uh, well over 100 acres of, of a watershed area that the water area that will go into that, that particular unit. So um, this is actually, I believe, uh, a slide on of the outfalls where they actually come out, the service entries, right. the outfall. Right by the high school. Outfall. Just west of the railroad tracks. Right. East and of the so, high school. Um, we, we, ideally, we would have put these units there, but it just there was too much infrastructure. It would be down there by the tennis courts at the high school, and it just wasn't possible to do that and have a good maintenance. So we were able to go up to Sunset Lake, Everything that we do for Sunset Lake helps the lake, and so it's, it's a win-win situation. Uh, this actually shows the one on Memorial Drive, and it would be sort of in this, um, on the border here, it'll be offline, it'll be in the, um, on the shoulder there, it's about a 10-foot area. Uh, these are very large structures, uh, however they can be installed within a few days' time. There will be some traffic issues, but uh, we can work around that. And uh, if all goes well, we're going to go out to bid with the specs uh, soon. And certainly by the end of the year, they can be installed and uh, pumped in, right in between the water. Uh, next slide. This actually shows the locations um, of the two on Grand Avenue. The one on Grand Avenue, you see these cones that are here. Actually, the outfall pipe is, um, is damaged. And so what we're going to do is put the structure right there and in the process, to be able to repair that alcohol pipe. 
and uh, return it to, to normal working uh, function. Next. Okay. Um, question. For anyone on the Is there one for Wesley Lake? There's not one for Wesley Lake. There, there, no. There's not one plan for Wesley Lake. We have the tree boxes for Wesley Lake. Yeah. We have the tree boxes and we uh, we hope to have some type of a bioswale or something of that nature. The idea is to again to slow down the flow of the water and to clean the water. So uh, we don't have one. There may already be existing one that's about there are some in uh, west of Chilean. I'm not sure exactly, but Neptune and Asbury, I think there's some trip devices already. I think the town already cleaned some of those. I'm not sure exactly what they're at. Yeah. Yeah. There also, yeah. There's also two current trip devices, one at the end of Kingsley and Dealey Drive uh, that was put in by developers, I think the first developer. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one uh, by Berg in Sunset. So there's actually two additional ones that the town claims. And they work like a charm. They do a great job. So they take the cigarette butts out, the <coughs> float them, other floatables, uh, and the sediment. Yeah, I'm on the Wesley Lake. Oh, sure, sure. And live on Lake here and there. So, uh, is it just sort of the mass that is smaller? That it's, you know? It was available funds. Okay. And there so. were projects. So it was you know, a sh it was kind of a shared unit. The state of New Jersey really wanted us to do green infrastructure on Wesley and Sunset. So that, that was the. We were going to put a separate treatment device offline, down further, just you know, west of, of Sunset. And, and Turner came up with the concept of putting them up, you know, going into the lake. That's that's why they're getting a treatment device going into the lake. Uh, otherwise, it was it was specifically meant for Deal Lake. So now we're going to treat Sunset, which flows into Deal Lake, and that solves, kills two birds at once. Then actually, Peter, was that? I'm sorry. Was that North End Development in Ocean Grove? Did they have any? There is, there is a, um, a resolution at the planning board tonight that I have to go to in 15 minutes. <laughs> and that resolution uh, approves the redevelopment plan for the old North End Hotel site in Ocean Grove, in Neptune Township. We had that uh, development agency include a uh, stormwater treatment device with their application so that the water coming into Wesley Lake from Ocean Grove and the water developed from their redevelopment site will all be filtered through a structure similar. And Peter, you you actually spoke with Gail Rosewater from the Wesley Lake yeah, Commission you, uh, and about the planning board chair and your yeah. Wesley Lake Commission chair, both very valuable resources. Met with them, uh, and we talked this over, and they had some great input. They were very impressed with with the whole outcome of that meeting. And I'm just going to ask that when you do decide what's going to happen at Wesley Lake, what devices you're going to put in, if you can come back and do another presentation oh, to the commission, that would be great. Would love to. Good. Thanks. Can the public ask a question? Sure. One. Oh, one question? Yes. All right. Ernest Mignoli, 400 Deal Lake Drive. Will these systems do anything relative to the most serious problem in the three lakes, which is chemical pollution? Or is it just for, like, debris, bottles, stuff like that? Well, they do, uh, they do capture some petrochemicals. So, um, that would be captured, and within the sediment, they kind of sometimes phosphorus is attached to the, to the fine sediments, and so you would be catching me on phosphorus as well. Yeah. So the floating well allowance will, will address phosphorus, nitrogen, various other types of nutrients that are found within the sediments and in the water as well. There's a whole, whole bunch that they do deal with. Uh, there was listed on the slide, but I wasn't going to on that. Uh, chemistry, but yeah. And just to follow up on that, um, both Wesley Lake and um, Sunset Lake and Deal Lake, I think, are working with the Urban Coast Institute at Monmouth University right. to do water testing to identify what chemicals are in those lakes. Then we could work with the DEP later on to make that all better. That's correct. That's correct. And also, we're putting a big push for geese control. We're to try to push on it. We, we have one demo project in Ocean, and we're looking for one in Asbury. We'd like to do in the park. We can talk to you separately. But well, we do we do grease chasers. Yeah, but I'm talking about some uh, uh, okay. material, another material. But I'll, okay. send, I'll send a separate email on it. Okay. But we really want to try to cat, keep the geese away this time of year because this is the mating season. Yeah. Uh, but the other one is fertilizer. So we're putting on the website. I didn't know about this, but there's there's laws in New Jersey. Do a little bit, but there's restrictions within 10 feet of the lakes mm -hmm. that you're not supposed to put fertilizer down. So nobody knows that, I don't think. 
So we put that on the website, I believe, today, uh, and we're going to start marketing that. You'll see that in the papers. Uh, we're going to put ads in the papers on that. So folks know. I think just people just don't have the information. And once they know, uh, I think a lot of these, the phosphates and nitrogen that are going to the lake, mostly nitrogen, uh, will be restricted. Because I think keeping it 10 feet away gives the ability of the grass near the lake to mm -hmm. capture nitrogen before it washes out. OK. Uh we deeply appreciate the presentation. It was fantastic. Uh, I, I would like you to, again, state the date of your meetings and time and place. Uh, it's, it's give, give the website because yeah. we're on TV, so this right. would go out to everybody. Okay. And then I would like you to introduce everybody that made a presentation, plus our two Hasbury Park volunteers that do such a great job on your commission. And when you all stand up, we'll, we're going to clap for you. Oh, <laughs> we're going to introduce each of us by ourselves, but I'll, I'll also mention that the DLA Commission meeting, meetings are third Thursday of the month, except for November, which we don't meet. Then we meet the first, the first uh, Thursday of December. We meet at 7 o'clock in Lincoln Town Hall, and we are on TV. Thanks to Asbury Park, too. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I'm the Ocean County representative of the Nonprofit. So um, my name is Jeannie Tuher. I'm the Asbury Park DLA Commissioner, and every every third Thursday I'm here too. <laughs> Phil Hodges, I'm, I'm Jeannie's alternate DLA Commissioner. Oh, I'm Dr. Jack Stansky, I'm from Princeton Hydro. Peter Rockian, uh, local engineer, uh, DLA Commissioner. Herbert Shelby, I'm as the boss. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, I, someone was talking to me. Uh, let me just say uh, again, can never thank you enough. We disagree on some issues every now and then, but yeah, this this is fantastic. And the most important thing is the sluice chamber shutdown grate because people don't realize how quick a storm can fill that lake. And that's why we had the flooding in the past, and hopefully this will solve it with the guillotine gates and everything. And I'm going to tell you a quick story and bore everybody, but I don't give a damn. Uh, like 20-some 20, 20 years ago, when I was deputy director of DPW, I was dealing with an engineer. And engineers are the smartest people in the world. Ask them, they'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't Peter. It wasn't Peter. And I was trying to explain to them, like, yeah, when we have high tide or a storm or anything, the water comes from there and comes to the lake. And they said, that's impossible. You're making this up. So I, I'd probably use the same flip phone <laughs> and call Joey Pilato. Oh, of course. And Joey Pilato, I said, Joey, are you busy? He said, why? He said, I want you to come down and explain logic to an engineer. He said, I'm on my way. And in Joey Pilato language, which I can't say because we're on TV, he kindly corrected the engineer, and then the next time we had a storm, we went down and showed him said, I'll be damned. And yes, yeah, so this should help you. And plus, what Don said, like these storms do not come at like 8 o'clock in the morning. They, they come all through the night, and then you got to go down, open it. You got to go down, close it. You got to do that. So between that and then electrifying it, so you don't have to go down there and not see your family, you know, not get any sleep or anything. That's fantastic, and what you're doing for the other two lakes in Asbury Park is deeply appreciated, and what you do overall is deeply appreciated. And we don't say it enough, but uh, thank you all, and great job, and uh, keep up the Mayor, good work. I, I might just say one thing. One of the mission, the, a mission statement, part of the mission for the DLA Commission is to educate the public. So what you're talking about <clears throat> in terms of what people know <clears throat> is really important, and I'm, I'm understanding the dynamics, how the lake is affected, its impact. We do, we did um, lake lowering presentations, stormwater management presentations for the public. So if you do come to our meetings, oftentimes we, you'll come and you'll get some information, get some education, which is really helpful. And Right, and they, they, how they can help and I'll tell your marketing team, I saw your calendar, you first flip over and you see how, you know, how to keep the lakes clean, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think. Thanks so much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but whenever you're going to have, now, awesome. now that we film you on APTV, whenever you're going to have an uh, uh, educational meeting, let us know beforehand so we can announce it here so people know, hey, watch the next meeting and everything. And again, 
when you're ready to come back and make another presentation whenever you want to. So here's some marketing. You got March 28th, DLA cleanup, 9 o'clock uh, at the boat ramp, and we'll break people up. We'll, we'll try to do some sunset work, and, and we'll do the rest of the lake. We, we usually pick up over a ton of material on these cleanups, so come and, on out. And Don and the DLA Commission works hand-in-hand -hand with the Asbury Park Fishing Club, oh. getting fish that aren't good to the lake out of it, and they've been very supportive. And you do a lot of work, and it's deeply April appreciated. 26. April 26th. There you 26. go. April 26th. Okay. <laughs> yeah, carp contest. Right? Carp contest. Uh, yeah. Cash prizes, biggest, most, uh, junior, and 12 o'clock. You're going to start fishing in the morning? 7. 7, 7, to, 7, 12, and 7 to 12. Joe will be there weighing them. Joe will be there we'll weighing them in. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, again, cannot thank you enough. Thanks and uh, thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Billy. We're on to item D, review of agenda items for the February 26th regular meeting. Okay, on the agenda tonight, uh, resolution 2020-103 is our bill list. Resolution 104 are the menu items um, identified by our beach utility for the summer. Uh, 105 is the purchase of our electricity. We had a reverse auction today and we'll be putting a two-year contract in place for that. Uh, 106 is authorizing the purchase of ammunition and targets for our police department. 107 is for the purchase of an ambulance disinfection system for our fire and ENTs. 108 is the purchase of two litter scooters for the beach department, which are on the previous 104 resolution, the menu items. 109 is a contract for the command training for the fire department. Item 110 is award for traffic striping. Um, 111 is re rejecting an RFQ proposal for affordable housing administrative agent. We only received one, so we're looking to get um, a better selection next time. Um, 112 is a resolution authorizing a professional services contract for sewer connection fee study. Um, 113 is appointing an architect to provide services for a new fire station. Item 114 is authorizing the submission of acceptance of grants for our cops and shops for 2020. And the addition 115 is a resolution authorizing the referral to the planning board for affordable housing ordinances and amendments to the zoning ordinance of Main Street, the CBD, Springwood Avenue. And um, this, this is a part of the 2019 third round housing element and fair share plan. Any questions? Next. We are matters from the city council. Okay. Hello. So I'd like to let you know that the Asbury Park Library has just started a book club that meets on the fourth Wednesday of every month, um, starting at 530. Uh, I believe it started tonight. Uh, but there, if you need more information, you can contact Ms. Fish at the library. Also, Senator Vingo Paul's office, along with uh, Assembly Members Hotelling and Downey, are having a, a Utility Assistance Day session for people who have fallen behind on utility payments or are having difficulty paying their bills. They can get help with gas, water, or electric bills. The session is Wednesday, March 4th from 4 to 7 at the Salvation Army Building in Asbury Park at um, 605 Asbury Avenue. In addition, the governor's office has expanded the EITC program in New Jersey. The EITC is a cash back tax credit that puts cash back in the pockets of working people. Uh, for people who work full-time, part-time, or are self-employed, um, EITC refunds don't count as income when applying for benefits uh, such as New Jersey Family Care, Cash Assistance, and Supplemental Income or Public Housing. Uh, the flyer is here and I believe also on the table for those who need it. That's it for me. Thank you. March 1st is the deadline for 2020 dual licenses for the city. 
The fee for a licensed dog, for a spayed or neutered dog is $15 and $18 for a non-spayed or neutered dog. This, this fee is in effect until March 1st. After that, you have to add an additional $10 to the fee. You can get the application online by going to cityofasburypark.com forward slash dog license. And you have to have proof of a vaccination through October 20, 31st, 2020. Also, it's tax season. And we're uh, fortunate that you can get your taxes done for free at the public library until April 11 on Fridays from 9 to 11.30 a.m. and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2. That's me. Thank you. This past Sunday, <coughs> Asbury Park Recreation Committee had the annual, the annual fashion show. And I just want to thank the committee the council, the participants, and the calls I've been getting over the last three or four days. The participation was outstanding. Uh, it seemed like um, everybody enjoyed themselves, and I'm really proud to be a part of this. Next is the deadline for special law enforcement is February 29th, which is coming up soon. Excuse me, my voice is low. <clears throat> So any, you know, any young person or anyone that would like to be a law enforcement, please get in touch with them so that we can add more to our police force. Thank you. The Asbury Park P Beach Utility is hiring um, part-time and full-time jobs for the summer. So contact the, uh, go on the city's website under Beach Patrol Jobs and apply for one of them. On Saturday, February 29th, a Saturday at Second Baptist Church from 1030 to 1130, please join us with Cooking with Heart, an uh, initiative by the Mayor's Wellness Committee, where we're going to have a demonstration on healthy cooking and healthy eating. <coughs> Again, this is being provided by Hackensack Meridian Health, and it's going to be a great event, so please, if you can make it, join us, and the Wellness Committee, Interfaith, uh, Kula Farms, Alliance Raspberry Park, uh, Hackensack are all part of the sponsors. So that's all I have. Thank you. Matters from the city attorney. Nothing at this time. Okay. Do you have it? I have nothing. Do you want to? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to le uh, introduce Lisa, e Lisa Esposito. Lisa works in the clerk's office. Um, Lisa is my right hand person. And the next council meeting, I will be on vacation, and Lisa will be filling in for me. Okay, okay uh, this is something that's very irregular, and I apologize. Uh, we, we ran late at work session, we ran late at this, so we're gonna have to take a 10 minute break, and or eight minute break, and we'll start again at 710. So we're gonna take a break to 710. Okay, we'll take a short break and right. resume at 710. Thank you. Meeting call to order. Councilmember Chapman. Here. Councilmember Clayton. Here. Councilmember Kendall. Present. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Here. Mayor Moore. Here. We're on to silent prayer, a moment of reflection. Please stand. We will now salute the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands. stands. One nation, As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 7, 2020, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. We're on to the public participation. Do I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Please come to the mic. State your name and address for the record. Each speaker will have three minutes. Ernest Vignoli, 400 Deal Lake Drive, 3057, number 25, Asbury Park. Uh, I'd like to start off by saying since September 3rd, 2019, uh, my car has been, uh, Jeep has been vandalized 23 times. 23 tires, uh, 
Just this Saturday, someone came up with a knife while I was there and knifed one of my tires. Uh, I have all the reports. Uh, I'd also like to say that since that time, there seems to be a lot of activity, like with shutting down my emails, my inability to call the police, my inability to work with the newspapers. So look, it's what it is. When these two police officers get indicted, it's all going to come out, okay? because they're also charged with conspiracy. So that's one thing. The other thing, as I mentioned two weeks ago, I think, about the conviction by the Asbury Park Police and the Monmouth County Prosecutor about a one-way sign on Ridge and uh, Washington. I believe that's near your church, isn't it, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, and there's never been a one-way sign there. And you want to know what's most insulting? The Monmouth County Prosecutor in Asbury Park testified under oath by certification that on March 18, 2018, there was a one-way sign, black and white arrow, on the corner, and I disobeyed it, and I got a ticket. I appealed it up to Superior Court. And the judge said to me, well, you know, the Asbury Park officer swore to it and testified, and the prosecutor said the sign was there. Right. So now, after I came to this meeting and told you, the city assistant city manager, deputy, sent an email to the DPW that, that night of the meeting, right? which was the day I was in court, by the way, to please put up a one-way sign at Ridge and Washington, brand new, for the first time. So. Everybody here lied. I, am I allowed to use the word lied? Chief, am I allowed to use the word lied? No, okay. okay, so everyone made false statements. There was never a sign there. I took a sign picture that night. I took a picture for a year after. And the day I was in court for the two Asbury Park police pre-indictment, they're putting up the sign that Thursday morning, which would make it the 13th. The Superior Court judge on the 12th said, you're guilty. Asbury Park Police said there was a sign. I'm the prosecutor. I say there's a sign. We certify it. And the judge says, get out. I believe them. I'm guilty, right? You know it's going to Trenton on an appeal because you can't do that. You can't keep telling these lies. It's, it's unforgivable. What, do I, what can I say with my last 20 seconds? It's unforgivable. You're caught. It's on record. It keeps happening over and over. All these events you're running, you're really hiding where the money's coming from, how you're spending it. You know what I mean? Taxpayers paying for people to eat Swedish meatballs and drink drinks. You know, city officials, councilmen, you know, dirty dancing on the stage. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see that. Thank you. You know where I'm going, Mayor? You don't no, care. Sir. Microphone. <coughs> I'm going to be real short and to Just the point. Just give us your State name and address, uh, please. Um, my name is Keith Burrell. I live at 400 Deal Lake Drive. I'm the superintendent. Um, I just want to say to City Council, you guys did a great job. Everything was great at the event Sunday. It was wonderful. So maybe he didn't want to see it, but we had a ball. You know, I don't appreciate that. You allow You're not allowed to. Okay? No, no, you keep allowing it. I'm telling you. If you keep on talking, I'm gonna have you really removed. Not point at me. If you keep on talking, I'm gonna have you removed. Yeah. Your time is up. Yeah, me removed. removed. Sir, would you please remove him? I'm leaving. Can you put it? I I am. <laughs> okay, uh, Dan have 17 Ridge Avenue, Asbury Park. Um, couple first three things. One. Um, congratulations on the Black History event, which was over at the Berkeley. Um, it was wonderfully run, and I think we should offer kudos to Cassandra and Alicia for a job well done. Um, <coughs> go to a lot of Black History events throughout the county, and Asbury gives the best Black History event of all cities. Even though Neptune, my alma mater, gives a big one, Asbury is just like, um, out of sight and good food. All right. Second, I don't know the young lady's name, but um, she's on the she um, <coughs> works for code enforcement. Black black sister. She has done a wonderful job in the last year since they put her over on Ridge Avenue. A lot of times when we look at the street as homeowners, we say, "What can we do?" And we do our best by putting out, you know, putting our garbage out and keeping everything pretty clean. But the onus, especially throughout the entire city, lays on landlords and who they rent to. 
she has gone on a one woman crusade making landlords clean up their property. But more important, now on Ridge, we've seen a change in the people that they rent the houses to. So <coughs> we get people who actually vet the people that they collect rent from, now all of a sudden, when we look down the street, there's no garbage, there's no raggedy cars, and I've been in that house for 30 years, and this is the best I've seen in the city, plus the street cleaner does a good job. <laughs> you know. So kudos, I can't remember her name. Um, Veronica. Veronica. That's Veronica. Yeah, Veronica. yeah. Um, you know, she deserves a plaque for the job <laughs> she's done. I mean, even Mr. Pizza looks good now. <laughs> you know. Um, third, oh, about three weeks ago, because I'm <coughs> suffering from congest had congestional heart failure, cancer, and I needed help, all these medicines came together and kind of like, woohoo, knocked me out the box. And my wife saw me pass out and called first aid, and I want to give kudos to Asbury Park's first aid, who showed up and picked up my 250-pound butt. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really what you would call dead weight, and carried me from the second story of my house and got me to Jersey Shore Medical Center and what they found out was that all the medicines that they gave me caused my blood sugar to go down to 37 and that's why I passed out. But you never can thank them enough for what they do under stress because the exact only thing I remember before I went out totally was my niece and a young man looking at me and I saw APFD on the house, on the hat and I was like, okay, I'm in good hands, you know, so thank you. And if you let them know, thank you again, okay? I gotta go to church now, it's Ash Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Danny, I'm glad you're feeling better and uh, it's nice to hear people say nice things about our employees. It's deeply appreciated. No problem, I'm gonna take a couple bags to my wife. Okay. <laughs> uh, hi, Rita Morano. <clears throat> Not so very nice things. The voice of reason. A lot of people don't know where the money comes from. So, as usual, we try to follow the money, not personalities. And I could see that you had an event on Sunday. Oh, you had the best, black tablecloths. I, the, I got the uh, bill resolution for that. You spent almost $10,000 on that affair. <clears throat> and then, some people got an award, lifetime award. Amy, you're only 42 years old. You got a long way to go. What I didn't give myself the award, Rita. Yeah, I know. Oh, <laughs> not much. Okay. But anyway, uh, you had one affair on Sunday. You had the one at the Berkeley. You had two at the Senior Center for almost $10,000. And that money came from the Community Block Grant Program. How does that work? I thought the Community Block Grant money was for people that needed it, not the city council. And I know you have a slush fund too, and that should be eliminated, because I know you're planning to raise the taxes. Everything goes up. And instead of spending all that money, and then Jesse, I wouldn't compliment anybody if I were you. You had somebody in your family working there. That's a no-no, in case you don't know it. You people have to learn that you're not there to be social butterflies. You're there to conduct business. And you shouldn't be mingling at it. You should be arm's length from people that you do business with. And evidently, with the people that were there, it seemed like they're the same ones. How do you do business with people and then you socialize with them? That's, that's, that's impossible. How are you gonna say no to any of those people? Never. You haven't said no yet. Nobody ever says no up there except John. Everybody else says yes. There's another word in Webster's Dictionary. It's N-O. But you, you don't abide by the rules. And then you have the lawyer and everybody else there participating in a social hour. That's wrong. That was, if you had an event, it was black history. And it wasn't black history because it was under administration. So that means that it's getting paid from that slush fund. That's a lot of money. And you've got all these things from Omaha, Nebraska, when you could have bought them in Corvo's or Johnson's. What, $564 for knives and forks and napkins? You, I don't think you look at those bills. $3,000 to rent the room? 
and then a fire pit outside, real luxury. It's great. And then you're gonna raise our taxes. I am really upset with everything that's going on. You used to be transparent. Now you're the old council again. The one that you replaced. Thank you, Rita. You're welcome. If you want to. Rita, I just wanted to let you know, and Tom Jordan is on the committee, and Eileen is on the committee, and it, was a, it wasn't just black history. If you was there, which I had two tickets for you, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. We try to bring, in recreation, it's not just for the kids. It's for all corners of Asbury Park. What I mean that we have Special Olympics. I never see you there. All right, we have dances, we have car parties. There's a lot of activity that we have for the whole community, not just, not just kids. All right. But you're not there for that. And the far as country. let me talk, you, you ran off with the mouth. Let me talk. All right. Far as my son is concerned, okay, you and you always speak on that. He works for a company, okay. I very seldom had any words with him. I sometimes I don't see my son in weeks. So don't come here and jump on my family because you don't like what you're doing. They like what we're doing, okay? We try to be professional with this, but every time we turn around, every time we try to do something for this city, you and a few other people attacked us. As far as I'm concerned, keep on attacking. God bless you. Try reducing the taxes. We love you there. Okay, Rita, thank you. Louise. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Louise Murray. It's a tough act to follow. Grand Avenue. Um, first of all, I'll back, back her up for a, spe a second. I didn't even know there were tickets to be had. And if there were, I might have gone. I just hear stuff word of mouth and obviously there were tickets printed. I don't know if there was a cost to it. I don't know if the party benefit by any uh, money. If they did, that would have been great if you gave it away to some charity, whatever charity you wanted to have, but just to spend the money seems a little foolish to me. Just that's a personal thing. I just think that if you were going to have an event like this and it was so successful, I think it would have been great to charge something, make a little money, and distribute it to the children in Asbury or whatever, or put it towards a new basketball, whatever. I don't know. One minute I hear, and this is, I'm only hearing, okay? One minute I hear it's for recreation, the next minute I'm hearing it's for black history. I don't know what it was for. But if you had a good time, fine, it's over, it's done with, but maybe you gotta think about it a little bit more closely and cross those T's and dot those I's and make it work. I mean, just don't spend the money, get something out of it. I mean, I was always told, don't give anything away you can sell. And I don't know, it just makes more sense to me if you did it that way. Now, on the bill resolution, uh, page, whatever. It's under, would you want the page? What do you want? Um, transport utility general plant, $4,260 for a door? I mean, what? Give, give me a page, I'm sorry. Okay. Which, what do I do? The page pack, on pack the bottom? Page. Page. Is, is that the number you want on the bottom? Please. Packet page 21. I'm guessing it's the overhead door for public maintenance. No, that was the glass that we put up for the parking. So okay. in, in the parking office, um, there was just a, uh, a counter. There was no glass to protect them. And cash management and other safety issues, you had to put a glass wall there, and that's what that is. A I'm sorry. At the parking office on Springwood Avenue. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't even know where that is. When people go to get, get their park, parking permits. Oh, okay. All right, okay. Uh, that, was, that was a safety I measure. That, I, yes. That's it's a it's a it's a window. It's on a door. It's like a, it's it's like in the bank. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I just wondered. It says door, so okay. All right. I'm good. Um, I think I covered it. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, Louise. And point taken as far as the future, uh, constructive criticism is always welcome. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Move it. Second well. Yeah. Close okay. public. All right. All in favor. We are on to the minutes. We have the executive session minutes of February 12th, the work session minutes of February 12th, and the regular meeting minutes of February 12th. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to individual resolutions. We have resolutions 2020-103, which is a resolution approving the payment of bills. Council person Chapman will abstain from 20-00278. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council member Chapman? Yes. Council member Clayton? Yes. Council member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. We have resolution 2020-104, a resolution identifying of menu items as per the subsequent developer agreement between the City of Asbury Park, Madison Asbury Retail LLC, and Asbury Partners. Do I have a motion? Move it. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2020-105, a resolution authorizing the purchase of electricity. Do I have a motion? Move, Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2020-106 is the resolution authorizing the purchase of ammunition and targets for the police department. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2020-107 is a resolution authorizing the purchase of an ambulance disinfection system. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2020-108 is a resolution authorizing the purchase of two Kubota litter scooters for the beach department. Do I have a motion? Move. Oh, second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2020-109 is a resolution awarding a contract for command training for the fire department. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. 2020-110 is a resolution awarding bid for traffic striping. Move Do it. it. Second. Anybody second. second? Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2020-111 is a resolution rejecting RFQ proposals for affordable housing administrative agent. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2020-112 is a resolution authorizing a professional service contract for a sewer connection fee study. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Mm -hmm. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2020-113 is appointing Shore Point Arch Architecture to provide architectural services for the fire station and authorizing the award of a non-fair and open professional service contract. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2020-114 is a resolution authorizing the submission and the acceptance of grant, applica grant applications for the 2020 Cops and Shops Summer Shore Initiative. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2020-115 is a resolution authorizing referral to the Planning Board of various affordable housing ordinances and amendments to the zoning ordinance and the Main Street, Central Business District, Springwood Avenue Redevelopment Plan, which are designed to officiate the city's adopted 2019 third round housing element 
and fair share plan along with the proposed revised official zoning map. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to ordinances. Ordinances for introduction. We have 2023, which is a bond ordinance providing for the construction of a parking garage at the Transportation Center of City Hall, Phase 1, a transportation utility improvement. Buying in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, state of New Jersey, appropriating one million, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of one million in bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof, with a public <coughs> hearing date of March 25th. Do I have a motion? Move, Move it. it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance. 2020-4 is an ordinance of the City of Asbury Park amending Chapter 7 of the Code of the City of Asbury Park regarding traffic regulations with a public hearing date of March 25th. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Motion to adjourn? Yes. Move it. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye.